Hello everyone, this is a new series that I decided to start and uh, we're going to try to program a web protection service ourselves. So let's say um, you wanted to buy one. Now uh, by following this uh, tutorial uh, series, you will learn how to do it yourself and how to impl implement your own features. So without uh, further ado, let's jump right into it. So we're going to program everything with Python. So um, if you don't have Python, just go to uh, python.org, I believe. Um, just go on Google and type Python, and here it is, python.org, and just click on download. So it should redirect you to this page and download Python 2.7 or Python 3.6. And depending on which version you have downloaded, uh, some steps might differ from this uh, tutorial. So um, in this tutorial, we're going to be using Python 2.7.14. So oh, I recommend you download it, uh, open it, and run the whole installation process. Once you're done, uh, once you're done, I recommend you to look for a program called PyCharm, and it's a nice IDE, uh, meaning um, Integrated Development Environment. Just click on download. I know some people, some of you advised me to uh, set up my IDE, but uh, I might do it in the future for now. I don't think it's a priority. So just click on download and um, no, I mean, go on the community, community version, download and get uh, everything for free. So once you've downloaded everything, just go uh, on um, open it, open PyCharm. So uh, let it just load. Here it is. Uh, go on File, New Project. Here, and here you can select the version of Python. I'm going to use Python 2.7, and I'm going to call this uh, Web Web Protection. So in this series, we're just going to learn how to um, basically block some URLs. If you want to protect your kids from like certain dangerous website. We're also going to learn how to block specific uh, sections of Google, such as Google Images or uh, videos. Also, uh, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to remove uh, the internet completely for a certain period of time. In the next tutorials, we're also going to learn how to control it from distance, meaning uh, block it from distance, and some virus protection towards the end. And if uh, the series goes really well, we're gonna I'm gonna try and show you how to do the same thing on Android, uh, make an APK and just uh, download it on your uh, kid's uh, mobile phone. So here I'm just gonna open in current window because I, I don't want this to show anymore. And uh, let it just build uh, here, so it's done. On the top left corner, you can see web protection, which is the name of our project file. All you have to do is, uh, well, for now, wait that it finishes the installing. So just right click, new, Python file. And I'm gonna keep, call it main. So I don't believe I need more than one file. And that's pretty much it for now. Okay, so the library that we're gonna use is called process, sub process. So all we're gonna say is import uh, sub process, and this should be already pre-installed in uh, the package, the Python package that you downloaded. So um, we are gonna use a couple of commands to uh, pretty much disable the Wi-Fi interface on the um, computer. So let me just show you the commands that we're gonna use. Uh, open your command prompt and type in netch interface. Um, I believe it was show interface. And that will show you every interface that is available on your computer. And here we can see that this one is connected to the internet and it's the wireless network connection interface. So let's do the same thing using Python. So let's create a Wi-Fi variable. And let's say sub process dot. And if we take a look at um, the documentation here, we can use the check output method. So it, we will um, run a command, make sure the output uh, doesn't get any error. 
and we will store that in a variable. So it was the call um, dot call output. Here uh, we'll use simple um, quotation mark, simple, not double, but simple, and netch with an S, N E T S H, interface show interface. And now if we print uh, our Wi Fi variable and run the, the script, we can see that it shows us um, everything correctly. But to avoid any uh, problem, let's just add uh, this simple um, uh, simple tag here. And it told us to say std out. S uh, std out and shell equals true. Okay, so this works works fine. Now, um, if we take a look at the output, what we want to disconnect is this one. Or uh, in other words, anything that has uh, the, um, the output connected, we want to disconnect it. So um, let me just split everything into an array of uh, for every individual lines, because we can't uh, compute this information as it is. So we will split it by lines. Um, let's just call it out uh, or just lines. Lines will be equal to Wi-Fi. It's a string, so we can do split. Or, uh, no, line split. So split lines. So Wi-Fi dot split lines. That will split every line. And if we uh, let's say. Instead of printing Wi-Fi, we print uh, lines. It should return a, an array or a list. And here you can see we have a list. The first element is an empty uh, an empty list. This is the second element, which it, which was our top uh, line. Then we have this. Then we have uh, this line, this line. So it really splits every line into an individual element of our array. And this will be useful because we will loop through all of these elements and we are looking for the word connected. So uh, let's just start our for loop for, let's call our variable i. For i in range of the length of our array, which is uh, the array is lines. So um, for i in range of lines, if we find the word uh, connected, the capital T, uh, if we find that in uh, lines in our uh, element i, so basically we say, okay, uh, first element, this one, look for the word connected. If you don't find anything, you don't run this command. You don't run what, whatever is in here. And then we look in the second element. If you find the word connected, we run in the third element and so on and so forth until we find um, the word connected somewhere. And so here uh, we have the word connected. So let me just create another variable, which will be our, um, uh, let's call it output. Or no, let's just call it um, interface. Let's call it interface is equal to uh, lines element i. So we want to take this element. We want to split all these spaces. So we want to get rid of these spaces. And we only want the interface, but for now let's just say it like that and let's print uh, interface. Let's see. Let's see what's the output as it is right now. And as you can see, it has splitted everything. It splitted the word enabled, connected, dedicated, and the whole thing here should be the name of our uh, interface. 
However, this is not um, correct. This is not a correct output because it splitted these two. It rem basically, when you use dot split, it removes the spaces. But here, in my case, my interface had spaces. So, so let's just uh, add a parameter. Let's say none that will remove the spaces for the three first elements. So it will remove the spaces for this one, this one, this one, but it will not remove spaces for this one. So let's just run it again and see whether this works or not. And it does. Here you can see that this is a single element of our array. It did not remove the spaces. And so that's pretty nice. Therefore, uh, our interface should be equal to the third element of our interface because this is element zero, one, two, and this is the third element. So element three. And let's print print the interface, the new interface, right? There it is. We have uh, we managed to find the interface uh, that is connected to the internet. Now the next uh, command that we are going to use is a very simple command. It's very similar to all you have to do is say netch interface set interface and here open quotation mark and this time they should be double quotation marks and uh, just paste it here and the quotation mark and say disable this uh, outputs a very interesting call and it says uh, the request operation requires ele uh, elevation. So we need to run the command shell as administrator. So right click and uh, then click on run as administrator. Here you should have a, a password, of course. And then it should uh, open this in administrator mode. Uh, so let me just copy the exact same command. and uh, netch n e t c h s h sorry and so it will run and just look at the bottom right corner it has uh, disconnected me from the internet now if you if i want to reconnect all i have to do is uh, run the same connect command but instead of disable at the end i'll just put enabled uh, enabled there you go uh, the uh, internet is back on now this only works if uh, the user is connected to the internet if he's not connected this uh, will not work you could uh, disable everything but I would not recommend that uh, if you want to be more if you want it to be like uh, if you want to block him completely from accessing the internet I would recommend to run um, the, the, the commands for every interface. So not just the one that is connected. But in the case that I'm showing you here, I'm only looking for the one that is connected. And then I take the name of the interface and I am printing it to the screen. But instead of printing it now, let's uh, use another subprocess call. And this time uh, we will use uh, the call here, this one, uh, just the normal subprocess dot call, subprocess dot call here, and the command is so here you're gonna type netch interface um, set interface and then a space, and at the end of the space, uh, let's just add a double quotation mark. So it's double then single and then plus uh, your interface plus so we're adding strings together uh, simple quotation mark then double then space and then interface uh, no no sorry then uh, disabled disabled so that call will simply disable uh, the interface uh, right there so uh, before that, I thought maybe adding a time uh, feature. 
So let's just import a library called called time. And here, um, before that, let's just say uh, time will be the input of uh, let's say please uh, type no please uh, no enter block time let's say just like in minutes but for the purpose of this no all right in minutes all right let's go and that will be time so after we disable it we simply say uh, time dot sleep for yeah it doesn't work so instead of calling it time here just call it t t and just say uh, t uh, here time dot sleep for t times 60 because we want it in minutes so you would do t times 60 uh, but just for the purpose of demonstration let me just say t dot um, time dot sleep for t so let's do it in seconds and then once you're done uh, we will just call the exact same um, thing we'll do the exact same command so process dot call all of that but here let's just enable enable so just enable the thing and we, uh, let's just copy the same uh, last two arguments from the previous uh, command here like that stdr subprocess std out and this thing here so let's run it and we should expect it to say we don't have the uh, it's not authorized to do it uh, let's say 30 uh, let's for purpose of demonstration let's say five seconds so yeah it says the request operation requires elevation run as uh, administrator same thing for uh, the other command so let's just save it close this thing and then uh, locate um, PyCharm right click run as administrator again enter your password and let it boot, uh, let it um, start. And so now it's loading our web, web protection um, project. It's loading the project. And here it is, let's close this thing. Uh, run it basically uh, uh, clicking f5 or go on top run here and then just run it uh, run run main and if we, you take a look at uh, here it says enter block time in seconds for demonstration purposes uh, let's say block it for 10 seconds so here just take a look on down, down there it, it's blocked uh, I don't have access to the internet anymore. Uh, let's just uh, see if we, I can go Python, no internet. And after 10 seconds, uh, it just brought the interface back up so I can reconnect to the internet. So it's working fine. Let's just uh, put it in minutes here. Uh, for the real um, program, just block it for an hour or so, 30 minutes, as you wish. And um, the user will not be able to connect to the internet if they don't have the administrator password. So that's, what, that's how you block the user uh, from accessing the internet for a certain amount of time. Next episode, we're gonna look um, into making, uh, blocking specific websites, uh, hopefully, um, it will be interesting and useful for all of you. So thank you and I'll see you in the next video.